难缠的，是你的命运。So there is no mistaking my words. There is conflict within you. Conflict. Man cannot be both savior and oppressor. Light and shadow. One has to be sacrificed for the other. Hello and welcome, um, ladies, gentlemen, and Reese's pieces in between. I'm back at another week, and this is your uh, dude, So Papo. And I want to say, like, I thought I'm at well, you should never lose track of where you came from. A lot of times, when you're kind of stuck in the where you're, you know, focusing on where you're currently at, and obviously you want to be able to make plan to to move forward, but you can't forget that you're supposed to move forward, and you can't just sit. I mean, we are a blast and definitely evolved, fortunate um, sort of being that lives in this world. You know, animals. They, you know, they live to eat and to fuck, and you know, then they're dead. Plants, in the same respect, well, that's a disrespect to label them fucking, but you know, a plant it pollinates, it grows, it it spreads its seed, and and no deepest way can, that, that I can express, you know, puts makes its stance. You know, it it um, it develops roots. And those roots, hopefully, all the strong, is what builds it and what makes it big and prosperous. But is what also extends branch and provides shelter. You know, provides a, a resource that pretty much keeps on giving. And whether we're using it to build our homes or to fucking to roll in and and smoke the hell out of or. You know, whatever which way that you can consume something, that's I think the the deepest part of a tree, and uh, that's it, the life that it gives, and we can't, like I said, lose sight. And I know I did, of you know where the root was. You know, you could see the root. It's it's at your it's at your feet. You know, you could trip on it. You could just stand still. Or you could use it to move, and movement is really what produces life. That's what actually gives、uh, momentum and jumpstarts, you know, creativity. That's that's what that does, and that's why you know you have Eminem who will fucking rap his raps while he's fucking running. That's some inspiration for the fucking treadmill right there, in which I have also ignored. And man, I just I made myself to just be a mean bastard, and you know I got first world problems. All the people should are really on blast. I'm just a motherfucker with a mic. You know what I'm saying? Missing his brother, missing really connection with the outside world. I felt like I've kept myself caged in because I've become unhappy with what I am, and you can't do that. You can't stay doing that not for too long. You know, a bear hibernates; it doesn't fucking you know disappear. Not the same a bear that I. And fruity in such ways, but hey, now what do you do when you just not want to deal with, with, with yourself? You fucking you binge, and I guess in this、uh, week's rendition of binge news,、um, <laughs> fucking Johnny Depp, man. I, I never really figured out what the outcome was、uh, with all the allegations and, and shit that happened with、uh, Amber Heard, who, if you're not familiar, was for a brief moment his wife. She is a pretty bad little dirty white bitch, and she, what I believe, did him dirty. Tried to get some money out the out the back, and started a, a ruckus. Saying that he was abusive, and she was able to catch one of his little crazy moments, which could either be evidence that you know he really, you know, was abusive, or I mean, more or less just that she caught him at a bad time and fucking tried to seek the opportunity to get it. Like she, out, out of all the moments she could have recorded, she fucking did that shit, and it seemed very staged. And she purposely was kind of egging him on. And I'm not, and 
nor do I endorse fucking, you know, domestic violence in that essence. But it just makes me wonder if this bitch was just a, your, your typical gold digging bitch that just, you know, happened to seek his fangs. And no matter how bad she looked in either, it was a Robert Rodriguez movie, not too sure it was Machete or one of those kind of uh, flicks, but... You know, even in fucking uh, Pineapple Express, a little 17 year old that said Throgan was porking, and you know, how dare he? But oh, kudos, you know, kind of bullshit. Anyways, he's a dirty bitch. And it, he is, and I'm not too sure what else he got going on. I think right now they're still filming even Pirates 3. So, you know, it's funny how the publicity will lead you into a certain situation. Um, but even amongst all that, for some fucking reason, Johnny Depp and his production company want to investigate deeper into the murders of uh, Biggie and Tupac. Normally, normally I say Tupac and Biggie, so he just he doesn't sound right, Biggie and Tupac. If he, Tupac's number one. It's just let that be answered first of all but that just makes me wonder that because there's been countless documentaries and why as he's going through this current shit here does he decide that as a as a project so i don't know it's almost ironic him trying to say like y'all should dig this shit up and y'all will see for yourselves i'm a free man not the way that i would normally push it but that's what's going on and i'm interested in, in, in the fact that he's doing that but i just should it matter where it's coming from? I mean, it's great that, that someone's putting the resources into investigating something that we won't, you know, I don't know. If it's Lost Flame, can that still be relevant? Obviously, it's one of um, the biggest questions, but, I mean, is this going to uncover some kind of conspiracy plot? Like, that'd be really dope. If it did, then it'd be worth it. So, that's interesting. It's a matter of gaining wind, maybe having people remember the name uh, that suddenly for sale for $125,000 uh, is a bullet, a bent um, bullet fragment uh, that were made into gold pendants and it was uh, encrusted with diamonds and y'all can look it up. It was actually reported by TMZ, but they're selling that shit. So it's kind of, that's just weird that we would have this stored away and who would say it's the authentic thing unless there's some sort of fucking unless you get this death certificate along with it to kind of show its uh, its authenticity and I don't know man shit the, the shit that's for sale it's it's, it's crazy and uh, so that we could put a, a price tag on me fuck we can poison our, your, our waters and get fresh water and fucking sell it to you so it's kind of They've, they've already they've already found an, an inn and there's a lot of things that we have to pay for that we're just getting taxed on like we're literally getting pimped it's you know and obviously like services and I, I love to mention Netflix because it's just it's fucking it's masterminded but it's giving you the service that you can maybe get around for free if you scout or if you you know do pirate sort of things uh, but it's giving you something of ease of use and shit that you can share so even if you're gonna hit one every in every four to six people from a family i mean you at least got a hook to where you know you who has a dave's password you know that that kind of thing so you're creating a staple to where at least one in ten for as an example a lot of example will have it because let's say of ease of use of that nature so either which way you're going to get more people and people maybe who forget about it it's a thing that you're getting monthly charged on your information is already in there and it's going to continue to charge that bitch until something changes and even then you, that was going to get you back and when they get you back by that time you know the service might be a little bit more expensive and you know they've done their hikes just like any growing business would not knocking them forward but and I'm kind of getting too lost because there's just other services that you know they, they just get your, your their teeth in whether they be health insurance um to where you have to pay so much per check anyway to then you know need something have to meet this ridiculous deductible that you can't afford because the fucking little bits of money that they take every month they didn't do your goddamn thing and even that was pinching you so you end up not, not using anything at all. Now, in that, like I said, in that same respect, so we could put a money, a price, a level of currency upon anything. And it was funny that there's this bitch um, in Seattle, and she has a, a tough story, um, but her house had burned down, and I guess they didn't have any sort of insurance. And you would hope that you never would need it. A lot of times you do it, and you can either get pimped or it can be in your nature. Now, when you're in a high-risk area for shit of that nature, you, you'd want to have that kind of protection, you know? Like, if you're going to be fucking, I mean, you really don't want to 
have the repercussions of it, then it probably would have been a good idea to, to use that rubber. It would have been a good idea. And in that, in that same regards, um, this young lady who's 20 and by no means, um, I wouldn't want to say beautiful, but, you know, bad, because beauty is not beholder, and I haven't really got to meet her or get to know her shit, but she's apparently trying to sell her virginity, and she took up stock um, somewhere at one of the bunny ranches in Nevada. So somewhere outside of Vegas And it's funny that Vegas supposedly doesn't allow for prostitution But there's a little town outside of it that, that does And I guess they have kind of like a, like a They call it the Bunny Ranch And you probably heard of it You can Google it most definitely And someone, well this girl She met up with whoever the owner is And he was going to give her the opportunity To live there rent free for five years And upon you know, living there, she's going to get the highest bidder, and they're aiming for a million because they're going to split it 50-50 to then, you know, to, for, to give her, you know, her virginity to the highest bidder. Now, I've heard other stories of, like, that people auctioning their, their virginity, but it, that's just a trip that, you know, something like that could happen and that we allow for it or that it could be, you know what I'm saying, somewhat, you know, forgivable because people have had a lot of, you know, shitty first time. So wouldn't that be something to have your first time be worth a million dollars? Like, even though you're going to get taxed half of it, which I'm not too sure if it even gets taxed even beyond that. So who knows the implications? Uh, but she signs a five-year contract pretty much to live there. And I imagine that if you're living in a fucking residence that is prostitution, you know, from room and board is meant for fucking maybe even sleeping the thing wasn't um autumn what the fuck lamar odom fucking courtney you know chloe's uh, ex he was stationed up there for a little bit or i think that's where he had his heart attack or some bullshit and um, i imagine that she's going to be having to do something she might keep her virginity to keep the pussy seal of authenticity or hymen or whatever it's called uh, hymen and i just i i I wonder if she's fucking giving hand job, blow job. Like, does it, I mean, what? Can, how can she be living there, you know, rent free? She's providing a service, I'd imagine. And what the fuck's the rest of her family? Does article doesn't really mention it, but you can Google that shit. And maybe if I'm not lazy, it'll be in the link of this video if you follow it on YouTube. Man who never has paid pussy up front. I got swindled once, but never had I paid for it up front. And. I couldn't imagine just being able to, I don't know, you get what you pay for, or you know, everything has its price, right? That's what they say. And in the, in the same similar fashion, in a really fucked up way, um, 50 uh, had gotten in, he's been, he's been having very public uh, spouts and fights with his fucking baby mama. And she, who I think is the, I don't know how many kids he has, but I know this was to his first boy. Damn near looks spitting image like him too. And they've had just a fucking fighting of, you know, just hatred for one another, whether 50 Cent is feeling used or, you know, being upset because, you know, he has a teen who's, who's probably a fucking, who's, who's a snob and who's a spoiled brat and probably doesn't appreciate what he has. And that's all of us, right? And, um... One of the fucked up things, obviously, he was, you know, providing, and I'm pretty sure the fucking child support this bitch got. She used it, you know, for herself and to live lavishly and to, you know what I'm saying, provide herself a lifestyle. Um, they have a house, and it was, I don't I don't know who owned it. I guess it was under 50's name, but he put it, gave it to her or something like that. I don't know exactly how those details go, but she had her house, and she wasn't maintaining it. Um, I'm not too sure what she was doing with the child support, but she was definitely housing another motherfucker in the crib and that's one of the things that's one of the biggest no no it's like whenever you cheat or you fucking around like you're not supposed to have another motherfucker in the crib just how it is it would be disrespectful for you to bring a bitch to the house like it's just that's the home that's the sacred spot anyways and they're, they're broken up or what have you and um, so she's you could say that she's willing she's able to do whatever the fuck she wants but you know what I'm saying still it just I don't know. It's just they're, they're, they're all pretty much living off of 50's donation, so to speak. So he's not going to be too happy to know where his, money's, when his, where his money's going to when he knows where it is and how, you know, wh wh you know what it is. And um, he had gotten a public spout. Again, I'm talking shit when I, apparently he... The, the boy's going to be turning, I don't know if it's 21 soon. So instead of it backing him to his 18, like they back him to his 21, I, I didn't know it was that old. Um, 
but he, you know, just he does little countdowns on his on his social medias and shit, which is fucking ridiculous. But I guess he found out that she wasn't paying on the house, so the house was being taken away. So he was just out there, just fucking meme in a way, and fucking Fifty Cent's one of the king of petties. I almost look, I mean, I, I can't say it. Not that I look up to it, but it's just one of those things. Like, damn. Ain't that some shit? And you never want to be on the receiving end of that motherfucker. But and that's the that's the that's, that's the say. fine line and funny edge of uh, what kids bring. And you know, I couldn't imagine being in a situation where you know not only can you not be you know around what you've made at all times, uh, but that you could just you know abandon it or just uh, fucking the unfortunate tear that can you know sometimes come from it. And it happens. And you know, you can only be so lucky when you know you're just growing gray hairs um but it, it shows a lot in people because sometimes you don't want to be around it i mean for those that that don't have that f- flesh and blood investment it can be quite you know a nuisance it can be seen as a fucking as a annoyance it can be seen as a, such a a burden when you know you have something that's 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 so you know Un, I don't say unproductive, but you know, uncontributing, or just obviously something that's you know not just ignorant, but you know, the blameless. You can't fucking help that unless you're literally helping it, doing for it, and you know that there there's a deeper love and connection when you finally come to that, and um, it's gonna it's gonna be like a, a wedge and a dividing line a lot like I said because of company that's kept and not wanting to be associated with like it just it, it blurs and it definitely segregates and like I said in friendships that that's gonna show itself and and somewhat related news um, there's just rumors of uh, well I guess no, not rumors because Kanye was doing his thing at a concert and he was uh, ranting as he normally does but he had given uh, mention of you know a certain album not happening or Watch the Thrones 2 not happening because of some bullshit between Tidal and uh, Apple which doesn't make any sense because the other connections he's make with this using the same damn thing for example uh, his supposed collab album with Drake or even whatever when you get featured and shit that's just it's whatever nonsense and he really just hypes himself up so much in a way to where you kind of wouldn't want to be seen with him you know what i'm saying just similar to you know the unfortunate azalea banks shit with at russell crows and fucking embarrassing the fuck out of rizza and you know what i'm saying who knows what, what could have happened in, in that state and, and that's a whole another topic in itself you know you just when you make such a fool of yourself you really don't want to associate and even though you know they had jay-z and um seen like the big brother to Kanye I mean it's it's been known that Jay-Z didn't want to sign him it was Dame Dash even though he stuck around with him he did that because he wanted to prosper himself you know it's all business decisions and you know there's a reason why you probably don't see him at functions anyway and you know I mean think about back when Kanye had you know blown up on uh, Taylor Swift and did the whole you know recognition to fian- to fiance like he made a fool out of himself and he, they don't try to draw attention to themselves in that aspect I mean shit you can remember when fucking uh, Solange Beyonce said she was being the fuck out of uh, Jay-Z while they're you know in an elevator like and they just try to come out cool as a fan outside of it because they keep the personal shit very personal and anyways Kanye had made a reference um uh, I'm not too sure if Jay-Z had checked on him, you know, over the Kim Kardashian thing, which was, you know, out of due res- out of respect, I guess, in its own, you know, as a human being. And then Kanye, you know, take getting seeing that inch and wanting to mile at the motherfucker said, well, why don't our kids hang out? Well, I mean, I mean, they don't want to be on camera like they do pretty well to where when you do see them, it's in a fucking fashion magazine or some something like that. You don't fucking see them trying to get milk. You know, or something of that nature. So he he does really good about you know what I'm saying be, keeping that shit under wraps. And there's mumblings or rumors that he had made reference to not really wanting to be in amongst all that attention. And you know that he simply did shit like Watch the Stones because he figured he'd make a lot out of the tour. And that's what happens when you make conglomerates. That's that's what happens when you make other entities that are worth a whole lot and can hopefully reach a whole different type of audience so that you can then leech off of that when you want their demographic or when you want their people. You know, you're, you're adding to yourself. You're fucking grabbing on the plate, putting your arms all around it, fucking bringing it in. 
and that's that's what it, that's what business is. With with um, all the power that comes from these moves that that these big businesses make, I mean, they also have influence. They have ways to manipulate and to kind of force trends so that it can be in their favor. You know, because then if it's in their favor, then they could, you know, they can gain off of it. And once again, that's just building and building. And, and one of the fucked up things that uh, showed its influence was uh, when Beyonce was in concert. And I'm not so sure if she was trying to uh, juke or jive or whatever, you know, those crazy dances black ladies do. And she had cut herself. So then there became this fucking thing that uh, uh, on social media that said hashtag cut for Beyonce. You had motherfuckers damn near mutilating themselves to do it in fucking honor of this fucking supposed queen. And people will fucking die and fucking cry and lie in the name of Beyonce. And no other sense than when you see shit like that. Can you say, oh my God, nigga, this is a fucking, that face, that false idol shit that uh, fucking the Bible talked about. Because here we are following and pretty much damn near saying, I mean, is, is it at the fucking pace to where motherfuckers are, you know, chanting some kind of demonic fucking thing and, you know, saying by the name, blah, 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 blah. No, but damn near because they're fucking probably singing to the bitches lyrics. And if that is not the most sanitizing and fucking chanting and, and fucking brainwashing avenue that there is, then I don't know what. And here they are fucking cutting the sauce for the bitch. And I don't apologize for it. Guys, and I'm not quiet about my distaste for the fucking, you know what I'm saying, the, the Clinton thing. Now, as a, as a fan I am of, of Bill, I can't, can't stand being lied to the way his bitch is doing it. So, I mean, is that sexist? I don't fucking know. I mean, definitely it's a double standard in wanting one to prevail with the fucking over and whatnots. But... You know, yeah, she's she's a lesser of the evil. She's gonna, like I said, keep the the mainstay at a bay, or at least where it is, and hopefully we can prosper some fucking hell. But once again, it's just business as usual with them, and. It sucks, like I said, because going with that influence, going with the markets that you want to fucking shop your agenda around, fucking Jay Z is doing some kind of benefit concert for. Her. So I mean, you're definitely choosing your sides, and and even as as big as he is. I mean, the fact that he's such um, an idol for the, I mean, for all people, you know, are in artistry, I guess, but for sure in the black community, you're going to sway that vote. You're going to do another vote or die sort of shit. This is your fucking hip hop introduction to where to aim towards, you know? And it's funny how, <laughs> I think, was it Abraham uh, fucking elephant? I want to say. I don't know how we got switched around to where this became that the side, but I feel like this is where we're being manipulated into. I mean, they're, they're, each side is is fucked for sure. But anyways, so he's doing his benefit concert and Pusha T, also another uh, stable and street uh, culture. You know what I'm saying? The fucking, I forget the name of his cocaine fucking uh, nicknames and shit, but you know what I'm saying? Pusha. This motherfucker is also like voicing and having ads fucking that's pro Hillary. So it's like, all right, well then you're definitely covering that demographic. As if you didn't have the single white females, now you got these niggas thinking that, you know, this is about to go towards and this is gonna I mean, it's gonna help and she was gonna inevitable inevitable for her to win anyway. And you know, one could say they wanna be on the winning side, but I mean, come on now. They had to have you, you get you get some kickback, you know what I'm saying, for for providing your services, using your celebrity, your influence, and just when I saw that and I heard that, I'm thinking, okay, you know, can't really can't really fight for the indie to try to you know sliver the way in here, not with this kind of thing. You'd have to have a fucking miracle. But then again, you know, there has the walls have to fall, and they have to get really tall before they can fall. So it's inevitable. You know, we gotta ride with Madonna it. went on record to say she'll blow you if you vote for Hillary. Now, see, now that, that's just me being more so upset because there's just grander, more powerful powers that, that be, you know, and, and things are gonna go where, where they need to. And you know, so our main focus is to once again be strong in our roots and for the winds and the rains that pass through us, hopefully we can once again keep steady. 
keep sturdy, not fall. And if we do, then you know, get back up and try to stand tall again, and hopefully become stronger from that. And that's that's ultimately what comes down to it. And we, you know, once again, kind of got to make the best with it and be able to adapt. And you know, we want a hero. And that's where it's kind of up to us. Because even though we can do things probably in a far, far smaller scale, I mean, look what the fucking look at ants do. And, you know, if you ever had an ant farm, and shout out to Alien Ant Farm, who's totally irrelevant from this, but definitely fucking, oh, just look them up. Um, they, can, they build, you know, colonies, and they handle business, and they do what they need to to survive. And, you know, the mission continues forward and they expand and they become greater. And what you do once you become greater, I mean, shit, the sky is the limit, hopefully. Not even this, you know, that sky, the fucking space, the universe. I mean, shit, we talked about space tourism last episode. You know, it's, you gotta do what you can for the planet or for yourself, just I mean, for whatever the hell you're gonna colonize. And, and I guess in, in, in almost funny respects, uh, DiCaprio, man, who, this motherfucker, uh, and I love that when he finally got his Oscar, you know, and he knew he was going to get it because, you know, shit really wasn't, a, you know, had anything upon him. I love that his speech was about, you know, protecting the earth and it, in, a, in a beautiful way, because not all of us, we're not, I mean, unless you're fucking rich or God lucky, um, if they do end up turning this, I mean, this world's going to shit. Um, but if you're going to be left on it while others, you know what I'm saying, are, are prospering and expanding and fucking maybe one day reaching different universes, you know, we're going to be stuck on this bitch. And it'd be a really good idea to try to protect it or to kind of give uh, attention to. And because once again, because if you can colonize, if you can build and stack whatever you're stacking, whatever you're building, it's going to be far greater. So, anyways, I'm fucking blowing him now, but he, he just, and he, he gave a proper shout out, just how it's noble to fucking give glory to God, and we've seen this whole fucking struggle in, the, in the essence of it, so he's, his, his message has to be broader, and has to be in a way so it doesn't scare, because as much as Jesus saves, this motherfucker scares a mass of motherfuckers, he just does, because that's what happens when you see something fucking glorious. You know, it's going to be fucking scary. It's going to, maybe it's going to upset you. Fuck, it might even anger you because it goes against what you've known, what you've believed, and what you're fucking able to comprehend. And that's not always that fucking great. So, and again, I'm fucking getting lost. But DiCaprio, this motherfucker, hero in his own sense, he's, uh, he's going to bring back Captain Planet. And if y'all weren't kids in the 90s or just happen to fucking watch it um can't plan it revolves around i think five kids and they, they each possess a ring and they all have their own backstories of course but each ring represents a different element like fire water earth hearts even in that bitch and um, i just i can't wait to see that adapted but anyways when they come together they create this fucking super being and i don't know how the fuck they're gonna do it without fucking seeming ridiculous because uh it was a don cheeto or whatever the fuck is that nigga's name is who can't think of any other movies to crash maybe i know he played the one brother the original brother in iron man i, I can't remember what was it, the newer version no that was Harvey terrence whatever the fuck that brother who yeah i think in crash he fucked a puerto rican bitch and he made a fucked up joke about fucking a mexican and and saying that it would piss her up, my mom more off if, if the bitch was white. So just whatever, all types of racist shit. But this guy played uh, Captain Planet, and he's just so ridiculous. He did it for funny or die. So if y'all can look that up, do that shit. And no matter how funny and ridiculous we aim to make fun of things, there's a deeper meaning behind it. Just how you know we can hide behind tragedy and fucking you know just be all emo and all up in our feelings. There's some deeper behind it. Hopefully strong roots. I forgot to mention this when I was talking about music earlier, but fucking speaking of just when you, your roots need replenishment and, you know, when you go and you try to seek fucking, not amnesty, but just, I'm saying protection, and you try to better yourself, how dare the motherfuckers that try to kick you while you're down. And fucking Kid Cudi, dude, you know, he had, he had gone out there, you know, and... He, you know, talked about just having suicidal thoughts and just, you know, probably feeling like shit, as one does. And, you know, 
he had support, which is good. And, you know, and it kind of opens up the avenue again for people speaking about, you know, mental health and, you know, how frowned upon it is to admit such things in the black community and really in any fucking community that has to deal with a fucking man that needs to be strong and that can't fucking ever be weak or be tired because he has to fucking keep churning and keep burning until you fucking burn yourself out. Anyways, and I, and I meant to mention this shit when the fucking Kanye's motherfucking whack ass. And no, no, I mean, he's a genius. He's a guy. But when this bitch ass fucking talks about uh, collabing with Drake and then Drake going on the offensive, uh, finally releasing something that, you know, was going at um, uh, Cuddy. And supposedly it might have been older shit, but I mean, come on, it was just released. It seems pretty topical. He's t- taking shots at uh, Drake, pretty much calling him out, saying that he's all pros dacked out and that, you know, he's been in a hiatus, fucking lost in himself and this motherfucker, you know, never taking a day off and all this, all this bullshit. And yes, it's fucking good wordplay, but it's like, motherfucker, how can you do that? Why would you do that? Uh, why are you finally responding back to these fucking tweets? And, and you know, and I will say, Cuddy did go out and he was, and he talked shit. He called out him and Kanye by having these fucking ghost writers and, you know, and, and come on now, uh, fucking, uh, he was a ghost writer for Kanye, you know, at, at one point. And I'm talking about Cuddy. So, you know, he, he knows, you know, uh, the, the, the shit about, you know, kind of giving all yourself, pretty much being used up like a fucking lemon on some hot sauce and soup or, you know saying some shit just you fucking thrown off to the side and you know you kind of you used all your best creativity maybe or you can't really overshadow that or maybe you're not getting any call back maybe you just kind of left off to the white wayside and you know whatever but he talks shit and finally Drake is responding to it so that kind of almost inspires me to where I hope motherfuckers really smash him then because he's willing to you know do this shit then you know what I'm saying come on bring it but it, you know, it makes me scared for my own damn self and my own combat thing. So, ooh, Lord, forgive me. You know where the where the world is going. We got fucking chimpanzees smoking pack a day in North Korea. That little Indonesian boy, he has to be three years old by now, smoking two packs a day. Fucking that whatever unknown drug substance thing that was out in Australia that supposedly was straight motherfuckers into zombies. I mean, shit, who knows? Just know that, um, you know, in, in trying times, I mean, since our earliest indigenous uh, of upbringings, you know, we gave sacrifice, whether or not we knew that it was to this higher being that was going to protect us. We wanted to give something precious, something uh, beautiful, something that's just, once again, uh, you can you couldn't name a price. You know, it's like the first fruits, you know, the virgins, the goodness. That's when you really come together and you, you know, you dedicate and you make your sacrifice. Oh, it's time 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 for dedication. All right, so in this uh, dedication, it goes to Colleen Ballinger. Or Ballinger. Uh, this baby is an American comedian, actress, singer, and YouTube personality. Now, she's really most best known for her character Miranda Sings, where she pretty much posts videos about characters on YouTube performing her one woman comedy act. And she actually goes on tours and fucking she sells out theaters worldwide about this shit. Anyway, she pretty much makes fun of comically talentless, egotistical, and even quirky and, and most of the shit. So, I mean, a lot of it's just satire but she just sings so terribly i mean it's hilarious it's it's what it is because she's eccentric she's narcissistic she i mean has like purposely bad dance moves and she really she's just she's fucking hilarious and at first i wasn't too sure if if she was just like this because you figure when you see people on youtube and you figure okay they have no idea what's going on but no she's she's in full control and and what she's doing and what she's making fun of and you know although it can seem real polarizing like that's part of her shtick and I, oh man she even i mean it's gotten to the point not only does she have millions of views and i don't know how many millions of followers on um, fucking ig and all the other social media shits um 
she has her own little Netflix series. So, and it's called Haters Back Off. And I haven't watched it. I, I really can't stomach seeing her do it for too long. But it's hilarious how it started like an insider joke. And she's actually like a vocal voice um, lesson person. Like she teaches people actually how to sing. I mean, you wouldn't know this because of fucking Selena Gomez is one of her pupils. So you fucking think, okay, well, she must be terrible. But I mean, she can make that bitch sing this little cutesy thing that's just meant to look cutesy and tiny the little fabric uh fin point fraction i don't know my mathicals are no not mathicals what am i trying to say hmm what was i trying to say hmm what was i trying to say something with the a hmm arithmetic that's exactly what I was trying to say. Anyways, she, I mean, does that in such a dope-ass way that I just feel like, man, like, out of all those people who, you know, lie and pretend to be someone, it's funny how she pretends to be the meek. And she's very beautiful and just very talented. And I know she went through a recent uh, divorce, and it was all fucking flogged. So, I mean, to have your life put on blast like that, it's just a motherfucker. And, I mean, she definitely deserves all that she gets. I mean, she fucking started from being a little entertainer at Disney. Like, the bitch literally got fired because, you know, when she does her little stick, it's it's kind of off-putting. So, they I don't know if they thought she had fucking bits and bursts of schizophrenic fucking retardation or how the hell that happened but she was just genius and she was making it work for her and she's really showing people that you know even though she makes fun of it about being prettier and being all this and being all that like she does it so that you can laugh and understand that you know it's really all behind the, the person who's who, who believes in it that so goes to show how deep belief can be because honestly when you're truly narcissistic and you're like a habitual liar and you just believe Leave the shit that you're saying even though it's a damn line like you're really off the rock or you're really off the deep end and that's her her commentary on the subject and i think that's just fucking genius because i feel like i do that sometimes i get too lost into this character that you create and that you you know have established because you feel like it's right or you kind of feel like you hate that person so much so you have to be it that's what she does and definitely dedications to her miss miranda sings and her smeared ass cocksucking makeup that looks damn near clownish and bad posture that you just can't help but fall in love with how dare you you dumb motherfucker and god bless you yeah. i mean god bless you so much for sticking around for listening for being a part of it i'm hoping y'all can uh, reach out if you wanted to either say what's up you can reach me at soapapo on any social media again that's s-o-u-l-p-a-p-o if you want to become a producer of the show you can go to patreon.com slash soapapo or keep not doing a goddamn thing because i'm gonna still talk at you next time so love who is your hero? I am my hero. Also, uh, my uncle is my hero. Also, myself. The end.